In this video, we're going to talk about the Dirac delta function. Dirac delta function. So we're basically going to come up with the Dirac delta function. So we'll start first uh, by defining the following function. So delta sub a of t minus t naught. We're going to define this, this specific piecewise function. And we're going to say it's 0 if t is between 0 and t naught minus a. We'll say it's 1 over 2a if we have the following condition on t. When you see the picture, it'll make a little more sense. And then 0 again uh, for t greater than or equal to t naught plus a. Okay, so let's look at this picture. We're going to graph this function and we're going to use the graph to conceptually come up with the Dirac delta function. It's pretty cool. So we look at two picks. So let's see, pick one. So pick, pick one. Pick one will be the picture of this function here. So there's our y-axis, there's our, our x-axis, and then here's t-naught, okay, and then here's here's t-naught plus a, and then here's t-naught minus a. All right, and it looks like it's zero all the way, it's a different color, all the way up to here it's zero, then it jumps up to 1 over 2a, okay, it jumps up to 1 over 2a, and it's, it's a horizontal line all the way to t naught plus a, then it drops back down to zero. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the second picture, so we'll call this uh, pick two. <laughs> so pick two. Pick two. So in pick two, we have to use our imagination a little bit. <laughs> all right, so I'll draw it again. So there's the y-axis, there's the x-axis. And what we're going to do is we are going to let, let me use a different color, let me use a blue, we are going to let A approach zero. So as A approaches zero, what is happening? So let's think about it. So when A gets really, really, really close to zero, right, that means that this point here is moving this way, and this point here is moving this way, right? And then you're getting 1 over 2a. That's the height. So the smaller a gets, this guy gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So for example, one situation might be this. Okay. And then a gets even smaller, so these guys get closer and closer to t naught, right? So another situation might be this as it gets closer. And it gets even closer. Here's t naught right in the middle, right? It gets closer. So it looks something like this. And it just keeps going up and up and up and up forever. So this describes this describes a sharp blow. Boom, this goes all the way up, right? So as, as A gets really close to zero, this blows up and goes to infinity. So now we're going to define the Dirac delta function as follows. So define. delta, so there's no a now, of t minus t naught, we're going to define that to be the limit as a approaches 0 of delta sub a. Okay, and this is called the Dirac delta function, this thing here, Dirac delta function. Obviously, it's not really a function, right? Uh, but we still call it the Dirac delta function, right? Um, it has two special properties, two, two key properties. So properties. The first property is that really you can think of it as having two outcomes. It's going to be equal to infinity if t is equal to t naught, and it'll be equal to zero if t is not equal to t naught. Right? It's either infinity 
or zero. There's no in between, right? Just boom or nothing. <laughs> Two, if you integrate this thing, right, if you integrate from zero to infinity, well, I think we can do it. Let's see if we can do it. Integration can be thought of as area, right? We can think of integ uh, integration as area. So we're finding this area here. So this height here is 1 over 2a. And this distance here, well, this is a, and this is a, so this is 2a. So the area is the area of the rectangle, right? So it's length times width. So it's 1 over 2a times 2a. Boom, so you just get 1. So the area is equal to 1. So this integral should be equal to 1. Beautiful stuff. And the key result um, that's used is that the third, third, third comment is that the Laplace transform of the Dirac delta function, so delta of t minus t naught, is simply e to the negative s t naught. Okay, so what happens is that you'll have differential equations, right? You'll have some, some, some. Uh, let me draw it up here. You'll have some like um, some some spring, you know, oscillating spring, just going along, minding its own business, right? Just on a, a regular spring, and all of a sudden, you know, something hits the spring. So. You know, a sharp blow hits the spring, so uh, it, the oscillation pattern changes. So Dirac delta is used for that. It's used to model uh, sharp blows and, and stuff like that. So um, that was pretty quick. Um, I hope that made sense, and that's it.